So you're the CEO and co-founder of Boundary, which is the creator of BAML, B-A-M-L, a programming language. Um, and it's an expressive language for text generation specifically. So our listeners, we probably have a ton of listeners out there who are calling LLMs, fine-tuning them for various purposes, and BAML is designed for them. So tell us about BAML, what the acronym means, um, yeah. why you so decided we'll to do the this acronym thing. first. Yeah. Um, BAML stands for Basic Ass Machine, machine Learning. But if you tell your boss, you can say basically a made-up language. <laughs> so, but the premise of BAML really came in uh, from this theory around how web development started out. So when we all started coding, at least for me, when I started coding websites, it was all a bunch of PHP and HTML kind of hacked together to make a website work. And then I remember interning at Meta, and they were the ones that made React. I think part of the reason why they made React was because their code base was starting to get atrocious to maintain. Imagine having a bunch of strings concatenating your HTML syntax, and now an intern comes in, like myself, forgets a closing div, and now your newsfeed is busted. It's, it's not really the way we want to write code, where multi-billion dollar corporations rely on an intern closing strings correctly. And it's not really even the intern's fault, because... Like, how could they really read a giant blob? I barely read essays. How could the intern do that? But a compiler like React could actually correct for those mistakes. If you add HTML and JavaScript into the same syntax by creating a new syntax, those ideas become much more easily expressed. And now in two milliseconds, you get a red squiggly line saying unit closes div tag. And in that web development loop, it just reframed the way we all started thinking about web development. Instead of being like, things are going to be broken, we could do state management because React handled it for us. We could do things like hot reloading a single component and having the state around it persist because React did that for us. It was tastefully done, even though it required learning something new. And we asked, in this AI world that we're all headed towards, we think a few things are going to be true. One, Every code base will have more prompts in every subsequent year than they did have in the previous year. And if that is true, we probably don't want all these unclosing div tag type of mistakes existing mm -hmm. around forever. And when you say prompt, you mean an, like an LLM prompt? Yeah, like an L, yeah, calling an LLM of some kind. And LLMs, I think, are one start, but I think all models in general are going to um, kind of be used long term. Models are only going to become more easy to use for people that know nothing about machine learning in the future. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we've done episodes recently. For example, people can listen to episode 853, where we talked about this generalization of LLMs to foundation models more broadly, maybe a vision model, for example, where you don't necessarily need to have um, a language input or output. But even with that kind of model, even kind of in a vision use case, it could be helpful. It could make things easier for people calling on that vision model if instead of having to write code, they, you, they can use a natural language prompt. And so I 100% agree with you. More and more often, the models that we're calling, whether they're big foundation models, including specifically LLMs, or the smaller models, uh, having natural language prompts in there to just very easily uh, kind of get what you're looking for, maybe even just out of a plot. Yeah, exactly. And I think... The, the thing that we have to think about as this stuff becomes more and more prevalent is actually the developer tooling that has to come with it. Just like how React had to exist for Next.js, TypeScript, and all these other things to come out and make our lives a lot better in the web development world, we asked what has to exist in the, in the world of uh, LLMs and generally AI models as a developer, not as the people per, perhaps producing the models, because uh, like that's a different world, but just the people consuming the models. And no matter how good the models get, at some point, you have to write bits on a machine that flip, and that's code. And it has to plug into your code base in a way that makes sense. And just like JavaScript sucks, and TypeScript is way better, because type safety and static analysis and errors that we get, we wanted to dump, do a bunch of algorithmic work that reframes the problem for users when we made BAML. 